First, let me start by introducing uh, Sharon Liu and Carrie Lemoy. And uh, Sharon is from Jobs for the Future. Sharon, do you want to give a quick self intro? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sharon Liu. I work at Jobs for the Future. Um, JFF is a national nonprofit in the US that focuses on transforming the education and workforce systems. Um, our hope is that, or our goal is that in the next nine years, um, that we will help 75 million adults in the US achieve, that face uh, barriers, uh, find economic advancement. Um, our team at Labs thinks about the ways that our technology infrastructure and the technology systems can either be a help or a hindrance to that. And so we're really excited to be part of this because we think there are a lot of tools um, that you all can make that will help this. Thank you, Sharon. And I'll tee up Carrie. She's feeling a bit under the weather. So um, any participation we can get from her is optional, um, not required. So Carrie is executive director of uh, the Digital Credentials Consortium. And it's a group of 12, 12 plus, now it's growing uni um, universities that are building the tools and the ecosystem to uh, enable decentralized identity tools to uh, our approaches to uh, proliferate. And so it's very exciting. They've done a lot of great work. Uh, Carrie, I don't know if you want to add anything. No, uh, that was great. Thank you very much for being so understanding. Um, <laughs> we're really excited to be part of this because we are aiming to increase like the use and understanding of verifiable credentials. Excuse me. And um, so we think like something like this will really help introduce people to the standards and the work and the software and help, as as Kim said, like proliferate this work uh, globally, we hope. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And, and I want to add that um, DCC, JFF have long history of really pushing forward interoperability and adoption in this space. And it started with let me uh, give some, actually, we're, we're here. You already know we're here. I wanted to start with giving some context on the JFF Plug Fest. So this is the Jobs for the Future Plug Fest. And what that is, is it's a series of challenges that have been about real interoperability. So here's what I mean. Decentralized identity involves a lot of standards like verifiable credentials, decentralized identifiers. But oddly, before JFF Plug Fest, it was more theoretical interoperability. What because there's a lot of different ways to interpret the standards, you know, VCs, decentralized identifiers, and then also the exchange protocols. There's a lot of different options a lot of different ways that people can interpret the specifications. What we needed was something where people could really, you know, where the rubber meets the road, basically, where you take a wallet and you show it getting credentials from multiple issuers, or you take multiple wallets and show it being them being able to accept credentials from multiple issuers, then add relying parties and getting all of those flows to work. And so JFF Plug Fest has been a series of, of three um, events to really build out each, um, demonstrate interoperability of each role in the decentralized identity ecosystem. And as a result, there's been a lot of work in terms of defining profiles, which are selections of standards and additional requirements, constraints, to say examples of schemas, and then artifacts that are, for example, showing cr credential issuance and verification playgrounds to help people test and get started with their implementations. Uh, there have been wallet implementations and, and schemas developed. And I'll tee up Sharon to add any more context that I'm missing. Um, no, I think that's a great overview. I, um, we can put in the chat as well the links to um, both the different um, uh, of the challenge sets for each of the first three plug fests, as well as I think the demo videos are still on for how people did it. But essentially what we wanted to do was to actually uh, stop, like move the conversation around 
um, the identity standards um, and interoperability away from the theoretical into, as Kim says, the practical, so that we can actually show that credentials can move from wallet to wallet or to be issued in multiple contexts, mixed and matched. And I think this is um, a good way to start this conversation because everything else um, that we are challenging people to do this time will be an extension of those. Thank you. So that brings us to the future of education and workforce track of the DIF hackathon. And it's divided into three challenges and then a bonus design challenge. And we'll walk through each of these. And for reference, the each of these builds on the Jobs for the Future uh, uh, plug fest. Sorry, I keep wanting to throw foundation in there because there's that additional F, but the F is for the four. And um, so that's that's my challenge to figure out. Okay, so we'll walk through some of these. The first one is verifiable learner worker IDs and records. And the nice one about this is it's pretty open-ended. The idea is that, so as part of the plug fest, a lot of tooling and infrastructure has been built to support the raw capabilities. But what we wanna do here is demonstrate what's possible when learners and workers can control their data and share it. And so these can be a, a lot, we've included some example use cases. So using uh, verifiable credentials that represent employee IDs to, um, um, to access you know, some, some kind of resources, showing employment history to apply for new jobs, and then also um, kind of moving into the skills area, the ability to demonstrate essential skills, um, like say proof that you can do a certain function at a job. Well, one, one example that came up was uh, paint mixing, something like that, but then also to demonstrate um, selected disclosure. So say your credential says a certain thing, but you reveal a subset to match a new use case. Um, let's see, there's a lot of additional details in the hackathon page as well. So let me go ahead and bring that up so that we can be looking at that. And by the way, if you're looking for details, it is in the Future of Education and Workforce here. And this has all of the details about each track, as well as uh, the detailed prize breakdown and the resources. Let me include that in the chat. Um, Kim, I also dropped a couple of things into the chat and um, the comment I'll just add to that is, um, earlier this year, we conducted a national job seeker survey in the U.S. of um, over 2,000 people who were looking for a job, and we asked them about um, how did they feel about using digital credentials and how did they feel about using digital wallets. And a lot of these challenges derive from some of the data that we got from that, which is um, one of the questions we asked people is what kind of um, credential would you like in your wallet? And you'll see that reflected, you know, in this challenge set, like people did want employment history and employment skills that they had. They wanted to be able to prove they worked somewhere or that they were a student or that they were formerly a student. So we just thought this is not a great opportunity to, I guess, give the people what they want or what we think people need to actually round out this experience. Now, challenge two, built on some, or actually, sorry, challenge two is to build new verifiable credential related tooling that, that we believe needs to exist in the world. And one of those is, so verifiable credentials has support for multiple languages, but in this one, we want to demonstrate, actually, you know, create tooling or, or see someone create tooling that facilitates VC construction in any language. There's a new render method attribute that we want to uh, show use of. So I think actually both of these are uh, sort of about testing out the use of render method to 
um, show these capabilities. And then it would be ideal to also focus on non-Latin script support, because as you probably noticed, a lot of the use case, or a lot of the samples that you see right now are very um, English uh, language focused. And so it would be good to get more functioning examples out in the wild. Browser integration. So, you know, there's been a lot of focus on, on wallets, mobile wallets specifically, but um, one thing that could really help with adoption and widespread use is to have some kind of method, like a browser plugin or something to um, help people with displaying and verifying verifiable credentials. So um, both of these are really focusing on new tooling that we think will be important for, um, for wider adoption. Hey, Kim, may I speak yeah. to the render method for a second? This is Carrie. Render method is fairly new. So um, we could learn a lot from what you build using this. Um, for instance, um, right now, the learner credential wallet DCC has been working on um, is has been experimenting with using render method in um, in a credential so that um, the wallet looks for the template that's in the render method and it um, exports as a PDF, meaning that the PDF can um, display whatever the issuer um, suggests should be displayed in it. What's great is that that template gets signed, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of the credential itself um, so that the verifier knows that that's how it was intended to be displayed. Um, but there's a whole lot of gotchas still. Like for instance, um, you'll see that it's including um an SVG template, but we learned that um the problems with SVGs is you can't do line wrapping very well. So we're actually using an HTML template. So there's like a whole lot of exploration that could be done here. And so we're trying to provide different scenarios where you could try this out and really help us understand what are really interesting ways to um to leverage this um this possibility. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Any, so we'll, we have a lot of time. We can go through these somewhat leisurely. Uh, feel free to just pipe up with any questions you have as we're going through. So challenge three focuses on feature enhancement. And uh, you, again, you see more focus on the render method attribute. One is for the learner credential wallet, and this is a resource actually that uh, Sharon and Carrie are, have been very active in um, pushing forward, and it is developed by DCC. So, um, and currently, I think has been donated to the Open Wallet Foundation, so it can see even broader adoption. It's used in uh, quite a few um, deployments including ASU's, uh, um, I forget now what we call it, the uh, sort of corner pocket use cases and um, you know a, a few pilots around, um, around the world, I think. And so what's really interesting is that it has an open source foundation and um, you know, but it can be repurposed or skinned so that institutions can use it how they want, but, it speaks standards deeply all the way down the stack. And um, so as open source, it's easy to extend and render method is new. And so this, ch this challenge focuses on adding support for the render method attribute in the learner credential wallet. Um, and Terry, do you have anything you wanna add on that? Um, no, I mean, similarly to what we said on, on the other projects, um, is, is another way to explore using render method. You know what's interesting? So when we had a PlugFest, I think it was a PlugFest 2, might have been 3, where we talked quite a bit about how do we know how credentials should be displayed in a wallet. And wallets like could determine anything, but there's a lot of fields that could be displayed. And the wallet, the mobile wallet apps specifically are very small and you can only fit so much in there. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if issuers could say, hey, this is how, what we we think should be displayed for this particular credential in the wallet. So we wanted to explore that here and see if that's possible. Our, our team at DCC has thought about it a little bit, but we'd love to see what you guys come up with. Not just guys, all of you. <laughs> <laughs> 
And and same with Verifier Plus, right? Um, Verifier Plus is a web verifier. You can plug in a VC code and it will check that it has been signed properly and um, and that it has been tampered with and that there's an issuer and an issuer registry. Um, but we're thinking about like, how could it be displayed in ways that make sense to people um, in the education and workforce space that would really like affect their trusting of these uh, these documents? And trust is the part that really underlines all of this. And so that is something that is, is great to see all of this progress in um, through render method. And the idea of as, you know, so say you graduated from university or, um, and, and you have your diploma that has all the elaborate seal or, you know, signature, all these kinds of things. These sort of markers are really keen, are very uh, core to the integrity and, um, you know, sort of ability to trust the artifact. And so that's something that really stands out for educational institution, institutional issuers um, and, you know, workforce as well. Those are the kinds of things that say with a lot of verifiable credentials where you're just sort of doing, accepting them in bulk or you're just looking for a, a really specific use case, um, you know, it's okay to just sort of have the check mark. But a lot of times in education workforce credentials, you might be accepting a, a much broader range of credentials from certain issuers. There might be different degree types and verifiers might be looking for additional markers of authenticity. So how do they know that someone's not just, you know, the, the thing you don't want to do is necessarily just show them the green check mark without the additional signals behind it. Now, certainly when it comes to bulk processing um, in employment systems, you're talking about something different there. But the idea here is for cases where humans are starting to adopt verifiable credentials, how do you ensure human confidence in the verification results? And this is going to be something that is um, increasingly important to help make sure that people, you know, know what to look for, know that they're not being scammed. And for example, know that they're not just being presented some sort of image that's spoofing um, some results. So what is the equivalent to the browser padlock, for example, what sort of trust signals can people look for? And that's why we crafted this bonus design challenge that is establishing credibility. And so there are I, what I would call informal conventions that people often do when they're verifying, like display the verification of, of verifiable credentials they might show a check mark and then they might show intermediate steps of, you know, the cryptography is sound, it hasn't expired, it's not revoked, something like that. But um, those are, there's not really well-known standards and conventions around that. So um, this challenge here is focusing on how do you ensure the human confidence? And so, Another goal is to help say like how this could be incorporated into organizational processes at scale. And the overall focus is human understandable, um, human understanding of trust in that verification process. Can I say one thing quickly about this? Yes. Um, okay, so this is really important because um, hopefully um, nobody on, as part, part as part of this challenge, just recreates another check mark. Um, as we have been working on deployments with a variety of um, organizations who um, are have you know just a range of familiarity with what a verifiable credential is, um, we are finding that people really are very confused about what is um, verification versus um, validation, and especially in the education or workforce scenario. Um, sometimes a credential will be, um, like I went to college, sometimes a credential will be, I know I have a skill and I know how to do something. And I think that oftentimes we have to clarify with people, the verification of a verifiable credential is that it hasn't been tampered and it's like, you know, the integrity of the credential package versus was that a good credential? Was it hard to earn? Does a person that is displaying that actually have that skill set? 
Um, those are two separate sort of processes, but um, from the perspective of some kinds of verifiers, for example, a human resource manager, um, they get a little bit mixed together. And so I think it would be interesting to see how people um, explain what is being checked and what is not being checked and how does that relate to um, what they hope to do with the credential. Really good call out. So lots of prizes and this one lists the winner for each challenge, but then the full breakdown as we saw was on the site. And then there's the bonus challenge. I want to emphasize that that's not a standalone submission that has to be um, stacked on top of another thing. So for example, you could submit for challenge 3A and the bonus challenge and win the combination of those prizes. Submission requirements, and this is where um, we can spend a bit of time looking into the uh, what we're talking about here. So actually, I'll start down at the bottom because all hackathon submissions for or almost all of them need a three minute video describing what the app does and a URL to the public code repository. For this case, we're, for this track, we're also saying that the, um, the code has to use an MIT license. And that's because all of this tooling is deeply open source MIT license. And this track is all about pushing for the, um, you know, these common public utilities that people can use uh, throughout institutions. And that's a really exciting thing as well is that I think that the track record of all of this and the fact that these tools are actually being used by real institutions, you have a, a tremendous opportunity with this track to actually know that what you're building will be broadly used. And this, this could use lead to all kinds of opportunities. Um, another requirement is a text description of the project features functionality. That's a requirement across the board in the hackathon and then explanation of how requirements were used in your submission. Now, getting to the specific track requirements. So it's intended to build on the JFF Plug Fest technical interoperability standards. And those are very uh, clearly called out. And we link to the JFF Plug Fest uh, 3 site, the latest version of it. The quick summary is that it requires a specific a specific exam, um, instance of verifiable credential format, and that's the Open Badges 3.0 <clears throat> standard. Um, it requires one of two methods of issuing credentials. So that's either the VC API with CHAPI, which is Credential Handler API, or OpenID for VC issuance. On the exchanging protocol side, or exchanging credential side, you have three protocol options. So there's another CHAPI with VP request variant, open ID for VP, and there's a wacky DIDCOM interop profile. And if that sounds like a lot, don't worry, because the great thing about this track is that there are tools you can make use of. Before we dive into those, I wanted to tee up Carrie, if you can add some quick context on, on open badges and why we're focusing on open badges 3.0. Sure, happy to. Um, so open badges 3.0 is sort of an education version of verifiable credentials. Um, it should work in exactly the same way as verifiable credentials. Um, it have the same expectations, except that it has a bunch of metadata properties related to uh, education, experience, workforce types of achievement. Um, the, the wallet, the learner credential wallet in Verifier Plus prioritizes open badges three and display, but it will display any type of verifiable credential, um, um, any data in the credential, uh, especially if you're using the render method, we can you know figure that out. But um, yeah, so, uh, so that's what open badges three is. It's final, we just finalized it uh, this past spring. We used it as part of the plug fest. So that's another reason why it makes sense to use it as, as part of this hackathon as well. Great. And so let's take a look. And again, we're at the point where I'm just going to 
show you or orient you to some of the PlugFest tools. You can ask questions anytime. So again, with the with this track, we have a lot of tools and resources that will help get you started. Uh, the VC Playground, that's uh, this, this first link here, uh, it lets you see what it's like to issue a credential, for example. And so this is precisely an example of a, uh, G well, we have a few ones. So we have JFF Open Badge. I, I don't know the difference between these. I'm guessing that any of these are valid to use. Um, do you happen to know, Sharon, Carrie? A while since we looked at these, we should probably evaluate them okay. for sure later on. So, for example, um, this one show you you can let me go back to where I was because I actually skipped a step. So, say if we start with issuer demo and and then this one will be safe to you. So JFF BCEDU Plugfest three, you can say issue verifiable credential. Um, if you, you can install, install a browser extension wallet and some are linked here, Veris wallet, learn card, one key and learner credential wallet is one that works as well. I recommend if you just want a credential schema to skip did authentication. And then you can see an example of a of a generated verifiable credential. And so this is this part should be familiar. Um, and this is also showing what an open badge credential looks like. So you have the issuer information in here, credential subject. And this one is just showing an achievement. Let me make it a little bigger. So the, the purpose of this credential is to show this wallet supports use of verifiable credentials. Um, and then these are specific fields that are, uh, or these are fields that are specific to open badges. So open badges has this criteria and image um, field into it, the cryptographic proof. And so at this point you can choose to store it in your credential wallet. And again, this one would, would end up being stored in the browser plugin wallet that you install. But in any case, if you're just looking for an example to get started, you can just grab one of these from the playground. The verifier demo is similar. And in this case, you're choosing one, it will, um, it will end up simulating a prompt from a relying party or verifier to request a credential. So um, if we request, if if we simulate a PlugFest three credential presentation request, so it's gonna actually do I have it installed? Um, maybe I I couldn't remember if I have it installed. Uh, okay, so I don't have it installed right now. Um, so sorry about that. But yeah, it will basically request a verifiable presentation, and then say if you have a wallet that um, that that supports that, then um, then you can share the credential that you just received. And then also there's the QR code path. If you are using a mobile wallet or say, for example, the um, the DCC, or the learner credential wallet, which can be installed on your mobile phone, then you could use the QR code path to test that. I see there's a question. Um, Okay, looks like it's resolved in here. Let me know if there's anything we need to discuss on the call. Um, it, so, it was, this is Carrie, sorry. This, this was just a question about um, a render method isn't required for a verify, for a, it's just a suggestion, it's a recommendation by the issuer. Um, and so we were just clarifying that, that understanding of it. Right. So Chappie, um, this site is, is a tool to, um, uh, well, again, for context, when you're issuing or exchanging credentials, one of the, the profiles that you could use involves use of Chappie or Credential Handler API. 
And that can be used both for issuing and exchanging. The only difference is, um, well, I guess, yeah, with exchanging, you use this certain verifiable presentation request format. Um, and so, yeah, Chappie, one of these options. And so if you do choose to use Chappie, there's a lot of great resources here. And a playground is, oh, I guess it's the same playground. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, but you can, um, for example, this has a lot of details about how you would work with it, depending on are you implementing a VC issuer, a verifier, or are you implementing a wallet? So just to preview what we're looking at, this is shows how to use the polyfill or the um, NPM module and how to import it. So a lot of good resources here if you're using Chappy. Um, if you're using the, uh, I don't remember what we link. I guess we just linked to the specs for um, OpenID for credential issuance in VP. We also link to the wacky didcom interop profile. And so that's a, a diff spec. And that is that actually operates over didcom exchanging credentials. So that's a sort of peer to peer um, connection based on dids. The other thing, okay, so we also link to the DCC or the learn. Sorry, I, I call it DCC wallet. I should be calling it learner credential wallet. And the source code is here. Um, you can go, I think, here to actually install it if you want as well. So um, if you do, I think a couple of our challenges reference the LCW wallet. And then, for example, challenge three, no, part part A is focused specifically on extending the learner credential wallet. So um, if you make change, if you make uh, if you submit to challenge three learner credential wallet, that would be really great because it will be used by uh, students and uh, people who are who are currently using it now. Let's see what other resources we have. Okay, we have the JFF plug for us three site that has a lot of additional details. So if you want to deep dive in, into any of this, I think you'll see a lot of duplication of things that we covered, but uh, maybe some additional things as well that, that you might find useful. Any questions, comments on these resources here? Okay, so... Um, yeah, next steps. If you're excited about this challenge, register on DevPost. That's the way you get um, registered. Well, anyone can participate in the Dip challenge. Again, we have the challenge details here. We are, we're here at the informal session. And then within the Dip Hackathon Discord server, which you can join at this link, um, there is an education track Discord channel that we're checking and um, eager to chat with you on. Any remaining questions? I think if you want to um, talk about maybe possible ideas or see if you think that something might be a good fit for the hackathon, then this would be a good time. Um, actually, and I think I can go ahead and and tease up our our tee up our office hours that will be happening on October 21st. There is a verifiable for education task force that's part of the credentials community group at W3C. That's where a lot of the ongoing work on this is happening on the standards development, things like that. So we'll be joining that call for office hours and we'll be posting updates to that on, on Discord. Any resources like libraries or SDKs to issue open badge credentials format um, Carrie, are there, I imagine some of the DCC tools would 
have some, you know, would be useful in that way. I'm going to pull up DCC's uh, open source. Yeah, let me pull to uh, get you all um, a list, um, some instructions on software you can install. Hold on one moment. <clears throat> So we have a, a we have a a set of microservices that can be used to issue credentials. Um, here you go. This is the deployment guide. Um, you know, we'd be willing to actually host a call if you guys would like, if y'all would like, um, to walk through, you know, how the the microservices work, so that you could use them. We also have a, a front end set of software to um. They use like a CSV upload where you can, excuse me, you can um, create a credential template and then you use the CSV upload to populate the variables of the template. Then when um, someone is emailed to claim the credential with the wallet, it inserts those credentials and it signs it um, and sends it back to their um, their did and, and associate with their did in the wallet. Um, we, uh, we'd be happy to host a call. We might actually have a video somewhere that I could send around um, that explains how all of this works, but we could uh, schedule something, Kim, to just sort of walk through that separately if folks are interested. Yeah, that sounds good. And um, actually, I think I'm going to add this to the site resources as well. I I don't think we currently reference that. Yeah, this is a relatively uh, new documentation. I'll keep in mind that the DCC creates a software for our members, and then we open source it for others to use. So there might be things that you run into, and we always accept, you know, PRs and, and issues. So we we appreciate that too as part of this. If you run into anything, please just let us know. So a lot of good resources there, and um, again, one of the great benefits of this track is that. Um, it, it does have a lot of tools and resources to build off of, and we will be in Discord if you have anything you want to discuss. So any anything else anyone wants to add? Great. Okay, well, I think we can close early. So thank you again, everyone. I think... Um, this track is just very important to uh, many of us here have been working on decentralized identity standards for a while. I think that um, this really gets to the heart of, of why many of us are, are working on it. And it's really about individuals and um, giving them opportunities, whether it's new employment, um, you know, education. And so I think that this one is really exciting. And I think also in terms of the impact that you can have with your project, it's um, extremely, um, you know, meaningful. So thank you very much for joining. Thank you so much. Thank and we'll make the recording available on Discord and um, also on YouTube. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.